I noticed some errors as I was reviewing the last video. We have create player algorithm instance takes an assembly, and yet I kept the variable name when this used to be called player one. So I didn't update these variable names. So let me do that real quick. And then create instance here on activator returns an object. So we need to, or the compile time type is object, but the runtime type we know will implement an I chess game. So as I I chess game. And then I notice I called get type here, which isn't correct. When I say get interfaces, control K I, it returns the type array. I already have a type, so I'm calling get type on a type object, which will be the type of the type object. That's just one level too deep. <laughs> so we can make this easier. Let's just say, hey, give me all the interfaces. This is a type. In fact, I'll even call it it interface type, interface type, where the interface type equals an I chess game. I'm going to save that file. We now have our host code ready to roll. We have our interface DLL. We have my algorithm. We have your algorithm, like so. And then the host just talks to us via this interface. And then we can pop in new instances of this all day long. Old code can call new code without having to update the old code. That's what I talked about in the last video. Anyway. Let's uh, compile this, see if it actually works. But I want to—I I think we need to prove that it works. So right here, down after we have both players, I'm going to say console right line player one dot make move. I think it was—is that what we called it? We said make move. It returns a chess move, which is one of these things. So I think let's do chess move. I'm, I'll make temporary variables just to make it more readable. Chess move, my move gets player one dot make move and make move takes a uh, oops a chess piece array here. I'm fighting between the two screens. Go to high definition. Um, it takes this array here, but if you notice, we never ever use the array. So just to be cheap and easy for purposes of this example, I'm going to pass null there, and then I'm going to say chess move. Your move gets player two dot make move we'll pass null there as well. So now I want to console right line player one dot let's we could we could write any of these. Let's just write the start column start column control L control V V and let's write player two start column. So if this whole application works correctly then when I write your start column we'll see three hundred and when we write Mine will see a three, so the output should be three, and then three hundred. All right, and I think we're good. Let's bring up the command prompt here uh, and and tie all this together. C sharp compiler forward slash r for reference. I want to reference the interface DLL. So what, what do we call it anyway? Let me list the contents of the directory here. We have the chess interface. Okay, so C sharp compiler forward slash reference chess interface dot dll and and why am I doing that because I uh, that's where I chess game is and and uh, the the chess move all that stuff is in that DLL. I remember I was being stubborn and not adding the reference explicitly in Visual Studio just to prove I can do it by hand here so C sharp compiler reference the chess interface dot dll let's call this the my chess host dot exe and then the input file is main class main class dot c s so I want before I actually hit enter though I want to point out if I can get this correctly I have my chess algorithm and your chess algorithm right here maybe I'll do a green this might be brighter yeah my chess algorithm your chess algorithm I'm not referencing either one of these I'm only referencing the DLL when I'm building the host Okay, I'm only referencing that interface DLL. I'm not referencing these ones because these can come and go as they please. We're, we're doing a plug-in architecture here where at runtime, we're going to use reflection to open these up and say, hey, tell me about yourself. Do you have the proper interface in there? Can I play chess with you? That kind of thing. So we are not compiling against these things. We will bind to them later dynamically. Right? It's called late Binding, you'll hear that term often in computer science where we are binding at runtime, not compile time. So this is a form 
of late binding. So anyway, let's move forward. Let's let's compile this. And IHS game does not contain. Did I call it start column? Start column. Oh, stupid me, player one. Man, you probably watch me make all these errors, and you're like, Jamie, that's totally not going to compile. Which which I'm sorry that that happens, but but it does. Okay, up arrow to get our command line back. Hit enter. I should probably save my edits. <laughs> oh my gosh, rough day. Up arrow, enter. Hey, it compiled. It compiled. In fact, I'm going to clear the screen and just and just compile it again so I could feel good without the errors in front of my face. All right, let me list the contents of the directory now, and we have my chess host. .exe. So when I run this, we should see an output of 3 for me and 300 for you. Remember, I'm printing these values right here. So let's run it. Let me bring this back into view, though. I'm going to say my chess host. I hit tab there twice to get the autocomplete. Enter, and there you go. 3 and 300. So that's cool. That's cool. We built a host over here that loaded dynamically some assemblies. We could easily change these strings using config files. I uh, can watch the videos on consuming configuration files and .NET and that sort of thing. But we could make these strings dynamic. It wouldn't be that hard at all. And then 20 years down the road, we could configure these strings to be something different and load completely different assemblies up at runtime. And we're not binding to them at compile time. We're binding to them late at runtime. Now, I, I do need to drop a little disclaimer here before I end this video. One, we are loading other people's code. Well, it's our code, but but say someone across the nation wrote a chess algorithm and they sent it to me and I tried to host it. Well, if their chess algorithm wreaked havoc and started I don't know, deleting files all over my computer, that would be bad. So .NET has this thing called code access security, which says, yeah, I'll load you, yeah, I'll let you run, but you can only do certain things, all right? You can't go delete files, you can't go look at my, you can't create a socket on the network, and all these sort of code access security. So go watch the code access security videos if you're interested in that. And then also, generally when we're loading up other uh, people's code or external libraries or things like this, plugins, we like to give them a sandbox, all right? We we don't load them up directly into our process. We like to say, here, here's your sandbox. And if if you screw this up, you know, maybe you uh, don't shut the lid and cats come and do what cats do to sandboxes, then that's your problem. That's not our problem. And, uh, and that's fine. In .NET, we call those app domains. Go watch the videos on app domains if you're interested in learning more about that. So this is a raw, lean, clean way of do using reflection to load a an add-in, but by all means, there's some other protective things, we protective measures we should take to guard ourselves against um, code that could potentially be either malicious, unintentionally, or intentionally, I don't care, but there you go.